Hi, good evening. Welcome to Business Live. Coming up tonight, we take a look at the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the housing sector as real estate developers reveal housing deals have been halved. Also tonight, a start date for the Continental Free Trade Agreement is postponed. The Association of Ghana Industries proposes measures among micro-enterprises to make them more competitive. Also tonight, Metro Mass Transit workers in the Ashanti region have called off their strike, but the company is in deep financial trouble. We'll bring you the latest. Thanks for being with us. Our details right after the break. And we head next to the Ashanti region where workers of the Metro Mass Transit Service in Kumasi were embarked on a sit-down strike last week over salary areas have resumed. Hours of closed-door meeting of a group uh, strikers and officials of the Trade Union Congress as well as the labor officers on Monday saw a consensus reached over the standoff. And as Sumesa has been following the story in our reports. Early morning, when the news team gauged the mood of passengers who had trooped to the Metro Mass terminal, this is what we found. So this is a mini bus. Actually, they don't run the operations here, but because the workers of the Metro Mass Transit are on strike, that is why the mini buses and the trotters are also cashing in. I want to engage the, the travelers over here. I understand they are bound for Borga. So they came here early in the morning to board the Metro Mass bus to Bologna. But because of the strike, now they are forced to resort to this minibus. I want to talk to them and find out how it's really affecting them. Like they, they will be like, they, uh, listen, how I was prepared to come and take Metro bus and I couldn't get it and I'll find myself on this one. And after that one, I will feel very bad because no choice. Because of no choice, I have to take this one. And why in We are managing because this is the only available car for us. Or else we might wait till the next day. Yeah, but how five something. The workers' salary arrears and other components of their terms of conditions were high on the agenda in the deliberation. The closed door meeting, which lasted for a couple of hours, yielded positive results at least for stranded passengers. Here is Industrial Relations Officer at TUC, Kofi Adu. Though it was challenging, and we expected that because uh, the challenges and the issues here are a lot, and workers have to speak to that. That is what has brought it, and then their issues had to also be addressed. And as far as we are concerned, there has been a consensus, and workers are actually going back to work on the assurance that we have had from the government. So what is assurance from government? Government has assured us that, yes, they've taken our grievances and, uh, in fact, our outstanding salaries are going to be paid to us. When? As a matter of fact, uh, I know you are privy to the directive that was issued by the National Secretariat. And in the directive, we have, we have given some timelines. And we hope by that time, the salaries would have been paid. If not, we are workers. We'll go back to the drawing board, and then we'll, we'll know the next line of action. Exactly when are you paying the standard? We, stand we have given ourselves the whole week for the payment of the salary. And we are hopeful that by the close of uh, the, 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 by, by the close of 13th, which is a week today, everything in terms of salaries would have cleared. Kumasi Metropolitan Labor Officer Martin Opukusetri explains how the consensus was reached. At the tier two, the second tier two, I learned they did that, but it doesn't go to their farm managers. There are a whole lot of uh, I mean, accusations where we have to meet the management and also listen to your side of the story. And then we have shown them stay in the house and back on strike for getting to four or five days will not help. Let's get to work and then we will resolve all issues. And they understood what, what uh, we are all saying. Okay, so you are the Metro Labor Officer, Metro Labor Officer yeah. for Kumasi. Yeah. These things have been hovering 
for for a couple of you know months now. Um, why are you now taking up the action? Yes, um, I was. I heard it when I was quite yesterday. And, no, I mean Friday, but because of the weekend, I said to come on Friday. You know, there are a so, whole lot of issues on air concerning Metro Mass, but it doesn't go to the attention that this is the situation. But when they embark on strike, then we have to come in and then listen to us. Then we... Nana, Asensu Mesa, reporting. Well, earlier, Nana Sensumesa spoke with the Deputy Managing Director of the Metro Mass Transit about the company's financial woes. That cannot be resolved. They understand the situation in which we find ourselves. So it's not like we have decided not to heed to what they are saying. They understand that there's a, we are a, a social intervention. We are not even a company that's meant to make profit. As long as we break even, we're able to pay our salary, we're able to pay for uh, parts, and be able to take care of you know, petty issues. So um, they would not, you know, they are not going to, we wouldn't say we wouldn't pay them simply because, or, or sideline them and go hire people simply because they have refused to work. I can assure you that before the end of today, they are going to go to back to work. I can assure you. Some of their concerns were that one, their glyco, their tier one, tier two have not been sorted out for a couple of months now. Also, they also told me that some of the buses are grounded with some minor, minor faults which need some few cities to be, you know, bring them back on the streets. What do you have to say to that? It's not, um, it's, 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 a, it's an issue, just like you said. I mean, our priority is to be able to pay for salary. Looking at our workforce, we have almost 2,900, close to 3,000 employees. And if you look at the number of buses we are routing now, our priority would be focused on paying for salary. Anything else, we may have to put on hold. Because if we decide we want to use everything to go pay for, um, to pay, our people rather than uh, pay for parts rather than using it to pay salary. This is the situation that we find ourselves. A company that used to generate over 200,000 cities a day is currently doing about less than 4,000 cities. And like you said, it may look like it's minor. It may be farm belts, it may be brakes, it may be ties, but you should understand that as a company, we, have, we are under PPA. So somebody supplied you something, you haven't been able to pay them, yet you expect them to, 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 to supply more. So this is the situation in which we find ourselves. If at, at the moment, let's say someone supplied you one million cities worth of stuff, you've not been able to pay them, yet you need about 50,000 to move buses. Okay. Are you going to take that 50,000 to that person or you are going to buy? If you decide to go and buy, that person has every right to take you on because you have some money to pay for stuff, cash. But then if you give that person 50,000, that person is not willing to supply more because he needs more than that 50,000 to be able to supply you. Well, we move away from that. Uh, we have talked a lot about the impact of COVID-19 on many sectors of the economy, but we have yet to explore its impact on the housing sector. Like you heard in our summaries, if you monitored, real estate developers are concerned that housing deals have been halved as a result of the pandemic. Let's speak with Executive Secretary of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, Samuel Megaibo, who joins us with some insight. Great to have you on the program tonight. Great to see you. Um, we've had it, so many people talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the operations, and the housing sector is not left out. Tell us more. Yeah, certainly. So I would like to say good evening to your viewers uh, to start with. Um, as you may be aware, all businesses definitely have been affected by the COVID uh, situation, mm. and the housing is not uh, left out also. We have uh, received our fair share of all the challenges that this COVID has brought to the industry. And uh, we are making do. Uh, we wouldn't throw our hands in despair and say nothing can be done. We are, we are still striving and surviving in spite of all the challenges that uh, we, are, we are having. So I read this article that said that uh, mortgages have been halved, um, housing deals have been halved. Is that the reality on the ground? Yeah, there, there has been some downward trend in the business, uh, in the real estate uh, business. I think even before COVID itself, we're seeing a bit of uh, 
a slight decline even before the COVID. And so the COVID seems to have sort of worsened our plight. But I'm not too sure if there has been any study to suggest the percentage that has been quoted. But I know um, interacting with some of our members, some of them have uh, expressed uh, concern about uh, some decline in business. But surprisingly, others who are also saying they are doing good business. So I guess before we can subject ourselves to tentative percentages, we have to actually conduct some kind of a study on the market to establish the percentage drop. But certainly there's been a decline in the business. Okay, because you know people say when it comes to mortgages, uh, they don't depreciate like a vehicle would depreciate in value. Yes, certainly so. You know, um, when there's, uh, uh, there are shocks in that industry, it takes a lot more or a bit, time, a bit of time before the impact is, is really felt. We can't feel the impact within three months, two months, three, uh, four months when it comes to real estate industry. It takes a bit of time. But the immediate shocks, just like all the businesses are complaining about, you cannot even get your client to visit you in your office to ask you about your house. You cannot even book an appointment to go and view houses. Those are the rare challenges that we are all confronted with right now. But the actual impact in terms of uh, decline in the business uh, volumes and all that, it is a bit too early to suggest the percentages that have been uh, uh, suggested on the, on, 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 on the market right now. I think we need a bit more steady into it before we can confirm that businesses have gone down that low. But it is just about the interface, the mm. normal everyday running of our businesses, which has uh, been hit so badly. But I believe that uh, we'll be able to overcome. Uh, you talk about how people aren't able to go and see houses. You can't invite people over because of the pandemic. It has limited movement. And so what, what um, areas are you exploring? For instance, technology. Now people can look up houses on the internet. What other ways are you uh, going about doing your work and still try to be profitable? Yes, uh, our marketing strategy, for example, has changed. We have uh, uh, managed to limit our interface interactions and move it onto the digital platform. Uh, most of us are running uh, digital adverts and, and we are engaging our clients through, you know, mediums like Zooms and all that mm. to get them to appreciate what we are doing. And that is going very well with, with, with most of us. But, you know, when it comes to property, they say seeing is believing. After you have done all the technology, you've gone through all the Zoom and all that, I think the feel of the, the, the properties that we are selling uh, becomes the climax of it all. And that is where we are having the challenge. So we have limited the interface, but it's still ongoing. I mean, if you interact with a client uh, on a digital platform for a long time and you get to the level where you realize that the seriousness has increased, the decision point has been reached. Obviously, they have to arrange the distance, uh, uh, social distance arrangement to at least get this person to go and view the property and make that decision and move on. Um, we, From the report that you were talking about, I saw um, uh, some expression of uh, a decline in mortgage uh, applications and all. I think that, that may be true. Mm. And it's all because of the interface. But I don't think it is, it, is, uh, it is that bad. It is all about the current situation. As we are, we are able to overcome the... the uh, we, we become to understand the disease very well. Uh, we, our medical professionals help us with how to better manage our system. All these things will change. And I, I guess we'll, we'll pick it up from there. Are there any reliefs you are seeking? Um, we want to. We have been listening, we've been watching, we've put our ears on the ground. We've been seeing some of the interventions and attempts by government to try and uh, help businesses. But we, we don't seem to be seeing what will help the real estate industry. We don't fall into the category of SMEs and stuff like that. We, 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 we need big, big, big uh, in interventions. And so I believe that it hasn't gotten to our time yet. Uh, we've been hearing of uh, other uh, options that are coming up and other interventions that will better suit us. But at the moment, what we are hearing that government has rolled out doesn't really uh, fit our, our uh, business uh, category. And so we are just hoping that we will, we will, government will, will begin to look at some of us and the, the big players also and what will actually work for us. Some of us, it is not even... It's perhaps not even about giving us uh, uh, money or so, 
like some of uh, what has been rolled out for the SMEs. But there could be some um, tax breaks, some reliefs here and there, so that it will give us some some space uh, to 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 turn this around. Yes. Very important. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best as well. Samuel Amegaibo, who is the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. We are grateful. Now, you're watching Business Live. Let's move on. Chief Executive of the Association of Ghana Industries, Setchuma Kwawa, says the postponement of the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement to January 2021 should be a good time for SMEs in the country to consider collaborative efforts that will increase their capacity on the continent. He's urging more measures among micro-enterprises to make them more competitive. There's a need for measure, synergies, and, and cooperation and collaboration around this time. And I just want to re echo that point. Because we seem to have suddenly forgotten about the CFTA that is coming on stream early next year. It was supposed to have started middle of this year. Because of the COVID, it's been shifted a bit. But that is going to be another game changer. And for us MSMEs, the way to benefit is that we must come together, cooperate, and upscale our operations so that we can be competitive. Because what the CFT is going to do is to open our markets. Our markets are going to be flooded by goods from Nigeria, from Egypt, from South Africa, everywhere. The same way we also have opportunities in other countries. So we have to be mindful of that and cooperate so that we can build bigger capacities and be competitive. That is one thing that is very critical. The second thing he mentioned, which I also want to re echo, is the fact that within your operations, there are controllable factors and uncontrollable factors. Issues that you can control, you can manage it. If it's to do with the labor, if it's to do with raw materials, if it's to do with borrowing money and all that. But there are factors that you can control. And that is where the association is coming. So it's important that you join business associations because there are issues that are at national level, policy related. Those policy related issues have serious impact on your business. And, and don't lose sight of it. You may have done the best of business practices, done all the research, you're using all the pro proper you know, ethical standards and everything, but your business can still go down if policy issues are not properly done in your favor. So, Working with business associations then become very important. And As we talk about the possibilities of measures, businesses also have to think about positioning for growth despite the pandemic. Earlier, I spoke with uh, co-founders of Scale Up Africa, Ama Jampo and Olivia Isidro in, uh, who had some perspective to share. So Scale Up Africa is a convener of ecosystem players across Africa and the diaspora. So we're really looking to provide more qualitative support to SMEs to enable them to grow. Um, as an angel investor and working with other investors in the ecosystem, you know, the, the support that we are provide that we are getting for SMEs isn't quite fit for purpose. We're not seeing the job creation, we're not seeing the growth metrics that we need to see for the investment to properly come into the sector. So we are really looking to support uh, SMEs with corporations and foundations mm -hmm. to enable us to run um, you know, corporate-sponsored entrepreneurship training and development programs. We're also a convener of um, ecosystem players, as I said. Black. And so we have a festival coming up, the Small Business Festival, uh, which will hope to showcase some of our talents, our technology, and opportunities in the ecosystem. So um, interesting that we are talking about scale up during these times. I don't think it's uh, something anybody wants to say during these times of the pandemic. But I've also heard that it's during a crisis that it, it is perhaps the best time to plan uh, ahead for the future. I don't know if you believe in that philosophy, but why should we be talking about scaling up during these times? Actually, I think one thing that you touched on briefly is the fact that there's been companies or organizations that have been able to grow and even thrive during a recession. So you take an example of one like um, Netflix or even um, um, Uber or even um, the online platform where you're able to, to, to rent, rent places for a short period of time, Airbnb. And it's purely because they need to tap into the purpose of what is currently happening around them. And it's not necessarily just about sort of making money, but it's understanding what the purpose of, of your business is and what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to help your consumers you know, achieve. So mm. it's looking at ways and means that you're able to tap into that. Because I think a lot of people go into business where they're thinking they want to make money, which is you know completely understandable, but also there needs to be an understanding of what is the true purpose of what you're trying to achieve. 
why should somebody buy into your service? And I think now is the time for brands and big companies or SMEs to start tapping into how they're able to pivot and re-strategize, but understanding that they are working towards one you know, purposeful goal of just, just showing their human side and just showing to consumers that we're in this with you, we're in this situation with you. And so trying to figure out how they can pivot and re-strategize to, to work alongside what, what, what their stakeholders can we need. And talk about re-strategizing, what are the options they can be looking at? Yeah, I think it's really important for SMEs to understand their core purpose, why they are doing what they're doing, what problem they are solving. And so having time like this, uh, you know, pandemic times to really critically think about that, with your, you know, your product and your market, how do they actually fit together in a strategic way? Uh, everyone's talking about how we've accelerated digital mm -hmm. just in a couple of months. You know, something that would have taken two years before the pandemic. Um, and so this is a great time for people to take that time to go through the strategizing process and, and realign their businesses yeah. um, for the future. Because then we're talking about building back better. Uh, corporations have a massive uh, role to play in, in, in terms of environmental, social governance issues. And so uh, for us, it's about really nurturing that relationship with big business yeah. to help small business. And that's really the engine of growth and where the jobs um, and economic growth um, opportunities lie. So that's what we're here for. Okay, and, and so you talk about uh, positioning small businesses to connect with big businesses. During these times, people are looking at whether or not they should, I mean, consider investors and all of that. What do you advise? I mean, investors are looking for growth at the end of the day. I mean, it, it's, you know, this is a troubling time for everybody economically, globally. It's, it's a challenge. Everywhere, the debate is shifting towards, you know, Black Lives Matter, economic equity. Um, you know, we import far too much of the continent, as everyone knows. So these are all opportunities for us to look more local. Uh, these are all part of the conversation that investors are having. And they're looking for more localized companies in terms of supply chain, procurement opportunities to you know, improve the quality and consistency of SMEs performance, improving their productivity. Uh, digitalization, of course, is, is a massive driver in terms of having tech as your you know, underbelly as a business to enable you to scale up. Okay. And these are all things that investors are constantly looking for and searching for. And you know, even as we speak, you know, deals are being done by investors. So it, it, it's not like nothing's happening. Things are happening. It's just that you, you need to, as a business owner, um, know what your strategic plans are, how you're going to plug into the opportunities, and how you're going to prepare for this. OK. And just under one minute, if you can, so how do people connect with you if they need advice? What can they do? They can actually reach out to us via our website and all of our social media platforms. So our website is wearescaleupafrica.com. Um, all the information in terms of our service and what we do, and also about the actual festival that we're running on the 6th of August. They're able to tap into our social media platforms on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. And it's all, um, the handle is Scale Up Africa. So they can reach out to us on those platforms. Our email addresses are all kind of on there for them to be able to get in touch with us. And there'll be lots of workshops and interactive sessions for them to also go through the motions of preparing their businesses for the next stage of building back better. All right. Some important tips for you if you run a small business during these times. Uh, if you want to check out, uh, check out Scale Up Africa. That's it for our bulletin tonight. More news on our website. As always, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. You've got the day's latest. You, you've got to check that website. And thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kwao. We'll see you same time tomorrow.